You're here with the members of the Man U2, and we're doing a special interview session for Facebook. And it's the Facebook friends of ours that sent in the questions. Um, it's going to be very hard uh, to get Larry to say anything at all. Uh, it's going to be hard for Bono to stop talking. Um, Adam, you're going to get a lot of answers about flower arranging and perfume and I'm going to answer anything but I will not be dis divulging what strings I use or my favorite echo pedals. So this is U2's Facebook chat. Okay, this one is for Larry. It's from uh, Juan Mercado. Larry, why doesn't Larry and Adam have cool names like The Edge and Bono? Well, Joan, um, I think that's a little unfair. <laughs> Do I have to answer that again? <laughs> okay, this is from Teresa Barker and Maxwell for The Edge. You and Bono seem to be the closest of friends. When do you really want to throw them out of a window? Get it all out, The Edge. <laughs> I would have to say, um, you know, it's hard being in a band. Bands are, um, they're, they're like street gangs. Um, so to be in a street gang age 40 plus is uh, <laughs> kind of unnatural and, 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 and even more difficult than maybe when you're in your 20s. But we, um, we still managed to make it work. Neil Robshaw wants to know, if you could go back in time to attend one gig, what would it be? Um, I think it would be Jimi Hendrix and The Who at the Isle of Wight. Uh -huh. uh, Paddy Smith at CBGB's. Um, television at CBGB's would be mine. Larry, the sweet. Oh, sweet. Man. 1972. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. Wow. This is from Harriet Madeline Jobson to Bono. Can you please never release an album on iTunes that automatically downloads to people's playlists ever again? It's really rude. Uh, oops. Um, I'm sorry about that. Um, had this beautiful idea. Monica got carried away with themselves. Um, artists are prone to that kind of thing. Drop of megalomania. Um, touch of generosity. A dash of self-promotion. <laughs> and <laughs> deep fear that these songs that we poured our life into over the last few years mightn't be heard. There's a lot of noise out there. I guess we uh, we got a little noisy ourselves to get through it. Okay, for Larry, um, this is from Beth Austin. Do you see yourself doing more acting in the future? And what is more fulfilling to you now, acting or or being a musician? Uh, <clears throat> I definitely see myself acting more as a musician in the future. <laughs> what did you think about Benedict um, cucumbers? <laughs> <laughs> it is true that to use Facebook you need to read and write. <laughs> oh, sorry, I need my glasses just for one second. Um, I just need to read what it is. <laughs> What did you think about Benedict Cumberbatch's photobombing um, at you at the award show? Wow, I um, I actually loved it. I thought um, I thought it was quite amazing, and I I immediately thought that um, Benedict should play basketball because <laughs> he uh, I mean the height he achieved was amazing <laughs> and. Um, I thought it was great. It's, the, it's exactly the sort of thing that should be done in those sort of occasions that, that are taking themselves so seriously. The Oscars is, is, is very serious. How do, this is good, how do rock stars smell like? <laughs> and have you any favorite fragrances? 
<clears throat> That's good. Well, I, I generally don't go around sniffing rock stars. Um, but what I tend to favour is sandalwood. Um, <laughs> And I like to mix it with a touch of Tom Ford's Urban Musk because it has staying power. You know that'll get you through the day. Um, if you've got if you've got something on in the evening, you can add bergamot to it. And if you've really got a tough night ahead of you, I reckon a little bit of frankincense will get you through most things. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Pint. <laughs>